Hey welcome friends and in this video I am going to discuss about the general scheme of the any cross coupling reaction and how palladium 2 is converted to palladium 0 and this video is very basic so you should watch this video because if you understand the video you, uh, the understanding of the cross coupling reactions will be very easy for you so let's start today's video. So previously I told about the general uh, reactions of organometallic compounds like beta hydride elimination, oxidative addition, reductive eliminations and so on. Now uh, today I am going to discuss about the actual reactions that is uh, the palladium and the other metal catalyzed reaction and my focus will be mainly on the palladium, uh, the reactions which involve palladium metal because that reactions are widely used. So First, you should know which palladium complexes are generally used for a reaction. Now, in any uh, cross coupling reaction or catalysis reaction, it is the palladium zero which is generally used. So, you can uh, think about palladium zero complex like this triphenyl phosphine complex of palladium zero. You, if you number, if you count the electron, palladium has 10 and each of this ligand contribute 2 electrons so 4 into 2 8 so it is 18 electron complex now this palladium 0 is the reactive species but uh, it has to dissociate and uh, this palladium triphenylphosphine complex which is 14 electron complex this is the reactive species for your oxidative addition so that thing i will discuss later but for now, one thing you should note is that this palladium zero complex, although it is the reactive, that is the palladium zero is involved in the reaction, but you cannot use this complex in your reaction because this handling of these complexes are difficult. Palladium zero complex like this, they are not stable. So, uh, the, the reagents or the complexes which are used are palladium two complex, that is like pdcl2 or like uh, palladium acetate these are used and these are plus two complex now i already told that these are not the reactive species so in the reaction condition somehow they are converted into palladium zero that will be used in the reaction so i will discuss two mechanisms that how can they be converted into palladium two to palladium zero and that is very important you should note that now let us consider first the case of palladium acetate. So you know, uh, you use the palladium acetate, and in along with that, triphenylphosphine ligand is used in excess. So first, what will happen? Triphenylphosphine will attack on palladium and displace one OAC group to give you. Uh, so actually, for first coordination, it can, uh, doesn't have to displace. It can. The, uh, just attached to here to give you this complex OAC here you will have minus and here you will have plus now another triphenyl phosphine can come and it can attack here but that at that, at that step one OAC group has to leave as OAC minus so here you are getting triphenyl phosphine so here you have plus here you have minus here you have palladium in this plus and this OAC now you can see here two pluses on the two phosphorus atom and one minus on the palladium so for electroneutrality I can remove one positive charge and one negative charge so effectively it will look like this that only one uh, phosphorus will have the positive charge now next what can happen is that then you can see this has a positive charge so the OAC minus which is lived in this step it can attack here to give you this OAC and here you will have actually it will have O and COME this now next what can happen so you will have another uh, many acetate molecule in your medium that is OAC minus 
so any of that OAC minus can attack here so this bond will go here this bond will go here and it will leave so what you are getting you are getting a palladium triphenyl phosphine and in this step you can see this is triphenyl phosphine oxide you know this C, uh, PO bond strength is very high and this reaction should be very much uh, towards this side and here you will have again OAC minus so now it can take another triphenyl phosphine ligand to form this complex which is a 14 electron species so this thing you can get so you can see from starting from palladium 2 you are getting a palladium 0 complex which is the effective reagent now this palladium 0 can be also obtained for, from PDCL2 so now how can you get so in this case uh, in this case triethyl amine is generally used or in this medium also you can have any other ligand I can represent it by, by L that L can be triphenyl phosphine or any other neutral ligand so first two of this neutral ligand will coordinate here and you will have this complex so you, if you count the electron it will be 16 electron complex now if you open one chlorine here so you have triethyl amine so this triethyl amine can attack on the palladium and that will kick off this cl as cl minus so basically what you will get you will get this n here et2 and here you will have two l ligands and here you will have one cl now here you will have a positive charge here you will have a negative charge because so actually here you will not have a negative charge because you are already uh, removing the chloride so you will have this situation now you will have a positive charge so this positive charge has to be neutralized so that can happen by this way so this hydride can go here so this is nothing but a beta hydride elimination reaction i already discussed that in this way a beta hydride elimination can occur because you can see this is alpha this is beta asp3 hydrogen is here at the beta position so this beta hydride elimination can occur and you will get this complex cl now you have triethyl amine in your medium and this nitrogen can take this hydrogen so it will push here and this cl minus will go so basically you will get pdl2 so now this pdl2 means it is a uh, 14 electron species 10 from palladium and 2 from uh, l, uh, l but more interestingly it is zero oxidation state because you can see it doesn't have any uh, negatively charged ligand and it is zero in charge so, so you can get a plus uh, from a plus starting from a plus two oxidation state you are getting a zero oxygen state so these are the ways how uh, you are generating in situ the um, uh, palladium zero complex which are the effective catalyst or effective reagent for your reaction now uh, we uh, discuss that now after discussing that we will see a general reaction scheme for uh, palladium catalyzed reaction so generally uh, for example in reaction medium you will have this type of complex where you, you will have four L ligands with your palladium now this L can be triphenyl phosphine for very general sense this, this can be triphenyl phosphine so if you count the electron it is 18 electron and it is very much unreactive now if one L goes you will have uh, palladium and three L ligands so this is now 16 electron species and if another L goes you have palladium and two L ligands so this is a 14 electron species and this 14 electron palladium species is the reactive species for undergoing a oxidative addition because you can see there is no steric hindrance and also it can achieve uh, 16 electron ligands by undergoing oxidative addition like for example let's say you have Rx so if it undergoes oxidative addition what you will get you will get palladium here you will have R here you, here you will have X and these two L are already there so now if you count the electron for palladium you have 10 electron for two L ligands you will have four electrons and for R and X each will contribute one 
so you will have another two so you have 16 electron now 16 electron is st stable for palladium complex so it is getting 16 electron complex so this is now your um, after this is the step of oxidative addition now after formation of this bond this r palladium or c this r actually this c uh, carbon palladium bond and this step after this step this C, P, C palladium bond, this is this bond is very much reactive. So, it can undergo uh, insertion reaction if, if it has a uh, favorable situation. So, what I mean by favorable situation now? So, now it can uh, attain uh, or it can attach another ligand to it, but for that it has to first release one ligand. So, for this it will release one L ligand to give you because all the time the 14 electron species in this in this particular series or uh, this is general reaction I will discuss many other reaction but one thing you have to remember is that for any reaction the 14 electron species that is the most reactive species so you have to always form the 14 electron species and now you can form this 14 electron species by removing one of the L ligand so if it remove one of the L ligand you will get this 14 electron species after that what can happen so let's say in your medium you have any alkene okay so let's say in your medium you have any alkene like this one now this alkene can uh, attach to this palladium so what you will get you will get this so now you can see this is again a 16 electron species because uh, this will also provide two electrons now I already told that this C palladium bond is very much reactive and it can undergo an uh, insertion reaction so like this it can undergo an uh, insertion reaction at this point I am not discussing that whether it will insert in this position or in this position for, for that I am taking a symmetrical example let's say I take this symmetrical example so there will be no confusion that where it is undergoing that I will discuss later that uh, if uh, it is unsymmetrical what will happen that uh, I will discuss later but for that example I am taking this simple symmetrical one so here you will get here X and L ligand and now here you will have this R group will be there and here you will have so this is now attaching to this palladium and to stabilize the ligand another L group should be attached to give you because it is 14 electron and it is reactive so another L group from the reaction condition can attach here to just make it coordinatively saturated so you will get this one uh, here you will have this R this group and this now if you have a hydrogen here this is you can see this is alpha this is beta so if you have a hydrogen here it can undergo a beta hydride elimination reaction so out of that you will be getting palladium here you will have l here you will have x here you will have another l and here you will have hydrogen and you are getting your product like this r this methyl group and this group now you can see you you successfully added you successfully added your R group from your Rx this R group you added here so this is the reaction this is actually the example of Hick reaction now what is the nature of R and what that things I will discuss but this is the this is a general scheme for Hick and any other that type of cross coupling reaction you can see this is the general, general scheme for first the ligand dissociation then oxidative addition then after that this is migratory insertion and in this case it is you can see alpha beta so in this case beta migratory insertion followed by this uh, beta hydride elimination and finally you will get your product now in this case one thing uh, while choosing this rx while choosing this rx you have to be careful because you, you know as uh, or you can see that this beta hydride elimination is always there in the reaction mechanism so if you choose r in such that it has a beta hydride so before undergoing all this reaction 
after attaching the r itself it can undergo a beta hydride elimination so what i am trying to say is that uh, when you are starting from this l and l and you are giving a rx so it will undergo oxidative addition here you have r and here you have x now let's say this r is such a group where you have a beta hydrogen already here so this type of substrate so this can uh, always undergo a beta hydride elimination and that will give you this product this alkene you will get so you have to take r in such a way that there is no such possibility of beta hydride elimination and for that you can take a, a situation where you have tart butyl group here so you can see if you have tart butyl group here uh, although the methyl can also undergo this type of elimination but beta hydride elimination is the more common if you have a alkyl group here that will not undergo this type of elimination in a facile way so you can take it or in general if you take a substrate like this so this is called vinylic substrate if you have x this is rx in this case this group is your r group so this is called vinylic substrate you can see this for vinylic substrate you don't have any uh, any beta hydrogen this is uh, alpha and this is beta you don't have any beta hydrogen which is sp3 hybridized uh, or which is attached to sp3 hybridized carbon so there is no possibility of such beta hydride elimination so it can easily proceed further for undergoing the Hick type of reaction or the cross coupling reaction what i just discussed so this is the basics of the organic reactions and if you understand this thing carefully the uh, for preceding things will be very easy for you to understand because all the reactions the uh, Hague reaction, the Suzuki reaction, Negeshi reaction, all coupling reactions follow the same line. So this for general uh, scheme you have to uh, understand and there, then you can uh, predict or you can uh, uh, learn any other cross coupling reaction. So in the previous, uh, in the next video I will discuss about uh, the Hague reaction and uh, all the examples, all the studio chemistry involved there. So for that. You have to subscribe my channel and uh, share this video with your friends and if you like the video then please give thumbs up thank you for watching